Hello guys! Welcome again to my YouTube channel. So, our topic that we're going to discuss for today's video is all about the microbial metabolism. But, before that, please subscribe my YouTube channel and don't forget to click the notification bell. So, let's define first about the microbial metabolism. So, when we say microbial metabolism, it is the means by which a microbe obtains the energy to nutrients such as carbon and it needs to live and reproduce. Microbes use many different types of metabolic strategies and species can often be differentiated from each other based on metabolic characteristics. Throughout Earth's history, Microbial metabolism has been a driving force behind the development and maintenance of the planet's biosphere. Eukaryotic organisms such as plants and animals typically depend on organic molecules for energy, growth, and reproduction. And prokaryotes, on the other hand, can metabolize a wide range of organic as well as an inorganic matter from complex organic molecules like cellulose to inorganic molecules and ions such as the atmospheric nitrogen, molecular hydrogen, sulfide, manganese, ferrous iron, and ferric iron. By metabolizing such substances, microbes chemically convert them to other forms. In some cases, a microbial metabolism produces chemicals that can be harmful to other organisms. In others, it produces substances that are essential to the metabolism and survival of other life forms. Microbial metabolism is an extreme environment, has two defining characteristics. It is low and it tends towards the lower measurement thresholds of all current techniques and methodological trends. So this provides the crucible of challenge to drive novel techniques, forcing researchers to employ new ideas as well as reinvent old ideas that have fallen out of favor or become overshadowed by current buzzwords in the field. Some of the techniques that have been creatively harnessed to successfully shed light on the impact of microbial metabolism in a typical environment include microscopy at surface air interfaces, mass balances, radio-labeled fatty acid synthesis, and stereoisomeric ratios. All microbial metabolisms can be arranged according to three principles. Number one, how the organism obtains carbon for synthesizing cell mass. So under the first principle, there are the autotrophic, the heterotrophic, and the mixotrophic. So when we say autotrophic, carbon is obtained from carbon dioxide. And when we say heterotrophic, carbon is obtained from organic compounds. And when we say mixotrophic, carbon is obtained from both organic compounds and by fixing carbon dioxide. Second, how the organism obtains reducing equivalents such as the hydrogen atoms or electrons used in either every conservation or in biosynthetic reactions. So under the second principle, there are the lithotrophic and the organotrophic. When we say lithotrophic, it is a reducing equivalents are obtained from an organic compounds. And when we say organotrophic, it reducing equivalents are obtained from organic compounds. Third principle, how the organism obtains energy for living and growing. So under the third principle, there are the phototrophic and the chemotrophic. So when we say phototrophic, energy is obtained from light. And when we say chemotrophic, energy is obtained from external chemical compounds. So guys, most of microorganisms obtain their energy from the nutrients they take into the cell. For microorganisms, these nutrients may come from either an organic or an inorganic source. So once the energy-giving nutrients enter the cell, they must be chemically processed so that they can be used. They are of no use to the cell in their raw form. 
The chemical processing that takes place involves a series of chemical reactions called a metabolic pathway that will function to trap some of their chemical energy in the form of ATP and to break down the larger molecules into smaller molecules that can be used as building blocks for the synthesis of new cellular components. So the word metabolism is the sum of all the chemical reactions that occur in the living organisms. So these chemical reactions are necessary to sustain life. So since metabolism involves chemical reactions, you may want to review some of the basic concepts of the chemistry um, way back in our grade school or high school and to our chemistry class. Atoms are made up of a combination of subatomic particles which are protons, electrons, and neutrons. So when we say protons, they are positively charged and are found at the nucleus of the atom. When we say electrons, they are negatively charged and are found on the outer portions of the atom. And when we say neutrons, have no charge and are found in the nucleus of the atom. Let's discuss about the metabolic pathway. So when we say metabolic pathway, it is a series of chemical reactions in a cell that build and break down molecules for cellular processes. So there are two types of the metabolic pathway. First is the anabolic and second is the catabolic. So when we say anabolic, it synthesizes molecules and energy. So when we say catabolic, it breaks down molecules and produces energy. Metabolic pathway is a step-by-step -step series of interconnected biochemical reactions that convert a substrate molecule or molecules through a series of metabolic intermediates, eventually yielding a final product or products. Example, one metabolic pathway for carbohydrates breaks large molecules down into glucose. Another metabolic pathway might build glucose into large carbohydrate molecules for storage. The first of these processes requires energy and is referred to as anabolic. The second process produces energy and is referred to as catabolic. So let's discuss also about the anabolic pathways. When we say anabolic pathways, it requires an input of energy to synthesize complex molecules from simpler ones. So one example of an anabolic pathway is the synthesis of sugar from carbon dioxide. Other examples include the synthesis of large proteins from amino acid building blocks and the synthesis of new DNA strands from nucleic acid building blocks. These processes are critical to the life of the cell take place constantly and demand energy provided by ATP and other high-energy molecules like NADH or the nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and the NADPH. So let's discuss also the catabolic pathways. It involves the degradation complex molecules into simpler ones, releasing the chemical energy stored in the bonds of those molecules. So some catabolic pathways can capture that energy to produce ATP, the molecule used to power all cellular processes, and other energy storing molecules such as lipids are also broken down through similar catabolic reactions to release energy and make adenosine triphosphate or the ATP. The importance of enzymes. Chemical reactions in metabolic pathways rarely takes place spontaneously. Each reaction step is facilitated or catalyzed by a protein called an enzyme. Enzymes are important to catalyzing all types of biological reactions, those that require energy as well as those that release energy. Where do metabolic pathways occur? Different metabolic pathways function based on the position within a eukaryotic cell and the significance of the pathway in the given compartment of the cell. For instance, the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation all take place in the mitochondrial membrane. What is the purpose of metabolic pathways? 
A metabolic pathway is a series of steps found in biochemical reactions that help convert molecules or substrates such as sugar into different, more readily usable materials. These reactions occur inside of a cell where enzymes or protein molecules break down or build up molecules. How do we control metabolic pathways? Regulation of metabolic pathways includes regulation of an enzyme in a pathway by increasing or decreasing its response to signals. Control involves monitoring the effects that these changes in an enzyme's activity have on the overall rate of the pathway. Why is microbial metabolism important? Fermentation. Yes, because of the fermentation. Fermentative organisms are very important industrially and are used to make many different types of food products. The different metabolic end products produced by each specific bacterial species are responsible for the different tastes and properties of each food. So guys, that's all about metabolic metabolism. If you have any question, you may comment your question in the comment box. And guys, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to click notification bell. God bless you all. Bye-bye.